Well, uh, thanks for helping my project. Um, could you say a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So my name is Vishal Karavanka. Um, I was previously a high school calculus and statistics teacher. Um, I'm going to do my master's in public policy at the University of Chicago next year. Uh, awesome. And um, let's see, uh, did you know that NASA's plan is to astronauts back to the moon for the first time since 1972? Uh, yes, I know briefly about it, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about it? I think it's great. I think we definitely need to do it. Um, I just think, like, I don't know why it took us so long from 1972 to now. I mean, obviously, there's, like, some public perception issues. But I think overall, it's, like, definitely a net benefit, <clears throat> not just for, like, you know, the U.S. or people in NASA, I think around the world. Because I think, like, the technological benefits that you get from, like, innovating about, like, how you get space kind of disperses throughout society. It's not just, like, within space stuff. So, like, for instance, the tennis racket, I think, the material, right, is, like, it comes from, uh, it came from, like, a development in space exploration technology, I think, something like that. So um, I think it's just generally good in general for society. Uh, but, I mean, it brings up the question, should we explore to invent things or should we invent things to explore? Like, how would you kind of relate those two so ideas? So should we explore things to invent? No, uh, should, we, should we invent things so that we can explore? Or should we explore so that we create the inventions? I mean, we should explore so we can invent. Oh, you think so? Okay. okay. Well, I mean, so I think uh, as humans, we're like hardwired to explore. Uh huh. Like there may be a subset of the population that will, but I think there will always be people within our like human race that will want to keep exploring, pushing the boundaries. Um, and I like admire that. And I think that for us to keep doing that, I think that through the course of like human history, um, people just like build upon like the previous generation's work. So like whatever technological innovation you make in our generation, the next generation will just make that better and it'll keep going, keep going. Um, so that's kind of like my view, but I, I, just, I just don't think we'll ever stop exploring. It's just in our human like DNA. Like we just build like that, so that's we can't help ourselves. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I feel like we are helping ourselves though. Like we used to um, be more of a nomadic mm -hmm. and then farming society, mm -hmm. and now we're very much people who live in the the comforts of civilization. Mm -hmm. And our concept of exploring is Different. have you visited this link, <laughs> as opposed to yeah, yeah. going to some uncharted wilderness. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I feel like we may have lost something uh, yeah, generationally. Yeah. No, I mean, it's definitely different, um, but I think that there are definitely people that are pushing boundaries. Like when I say discovery, I'm not just talking about like, oh, like this new like land mass. I don't know what this is, so I'm going to walk over it. I mean, probably the first generations did that, right? First generations of humans, they wanted to keep seeing, so they kept expanding, you know, starting from Africa throughout the world. And no other like species has done something like that, which is <laughs> insane. Um, but I think people do that in their specific subfields, right? Like in chemistry. You know, there are scientists like working um, to find like the next cure for cancer or like in the space thing, right? They want to go to the moon and then eventually like Elon Musk wants to put people on Mars. So they'll keep doing this. I think in everyone in their own specific field is like discovering and like exploring and trying to f understand like reality better. Mm -hmm. I think um, that's what we try to do as humans. We just try to understand what's going on and all this. But we kind of confined it. Like we made like these subjects, right? Like physics, chemistry, economics, whatever. And for us to, it's like easier for us to organize it and understand. But I think in general, what we're all trying to do is just get a better understanding of reality. So I don't know. Uh, you know, um, so it helps us better understand and, and focus, yeah. but also creates artificial divisions between knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. does that cause us any problems with like actually breaking through and, and truly understanding the nature of things? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that the best innovators and inventions come from like fields that are like from people that work um, in multiple fields, right? Like they have uh, like one varied interest and like they're able to like apply that to like very different fields. I think a good example of someone like that would be like Elon Musk or someone like Benjamin Franklin. I think these people, um, they were very, like they got very good at one subject and they were able to apply the thinking that they learned in that subject to various different fields. And that kind of shaped our understanding of those fields. Today, like if someone studies like biology, right? They'll do like a PhD because I want to understand the specific mechanism of like a cell and they'll stay in that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. We mm -hmm. Like I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that at all. I'm just saying like, um, like 
I think the most innovation comes like, or the true pieces of innovation come like when you take different fields and kind of merge them together and apply different types of thinking to like different fields, right? I think that's like very cool. Um, I think another person I really admire is like John Nash. He took like mathematics, he applied it to, you know, economics, he applied it to like uh, trade, like in law, like um, I think it's like very, uh, he's someone I admire just because he was able to take such like a simple subject like math and make it apply to so many different things that affect the way we think about the world. So, yeah, I don't know. All right, Thomas Edison. Oh, yeah, Thomas Edison, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, he's, everybody knows about the light bulb, yeah, and yeah. they may know about the phonograph, but he also owned a cement company yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, improvements to the telegraph. Yep, yep. Uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. We definitely need more uh, <laughs> Edison. I think we definitely benefit, yeah. It's just hard to do that, though. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, difficult. they just kind of randomly appear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so in 200 years, how far do you think we've gotten? I mean, do you think we're still, like, only on the Earth, or do you think a Mars colony is in our... Uh, two future. Year, 200 years, 200 from, years now. from now. So, I, I definitely think Mars is in our future. Um, I think someone will figure out, like like I said, like generations just build upon the work of other generations. I think that, you know, someone will figure out, someone will lead a good mission, or, or a good team of people will lead these missions. That, I mean, it's uh, never one person, it's usually like groups of people. Um, I think, I think we will have done it. Um, it's just, I don't know, like the time frames, I may be like, too optimistic in saying be 200 years but I think like nonetheless I think we'll eventually get there and I think they'll figure out how to live on there I think they'll figure out how to like um, you know like be able to survive on Mars we want to create an ecosystem for us to like sustainably survive there because humans have literally come from like just surviving in forests to now living in cities I mean I think even though the, the gap may be like a thousand years I think humans are very like well equipped to adapt to circumstances um you know so i, I think it'll happen eventually. i think there'll be babies born on Mars. i think it'll be very good for the human race in the uh, but the technology seems to come in spurts um mm. i mean we went thousands of years without a single yep. transistor yep, yep. and now we've gone from uh you know in the last um i guess 50 years mm -hmm. or maybe yeah i think 50 years mm -hmm. of having a transistor to having millions of transistors on a single chip, mm -hmm. to billions of transistors on a single chip. And I was just listening to the Intel CEO mm -hmm. the other day talking about, mm -hmm. he thinks in the next couple of years we'll have a trillion transistors mm -hmm. on a single chip. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but then you have other technology like mm -hmm. the washing machine. Mm -hmm. um, it seems, you know, once we invented like the washer dryer where you mm -hmm. put the stuff in the washer, take it out, put it in the dryer, mm -hmm. We really haven't seen any fundamental <laughs> improvements. Yeah, yeah. It's not like not. It's not like a folding your clothes yeah, yeah. or um, automatically taking it from the, the hamper, yeah, yeah. and you know. So it's. It's. I mean, I think. Um, no, I mean, I think what you're saying with the folding thing, I think that could be very well in our future. I think the AI <laughs> may eventually get that good. Um, it's already getting that good. I just think someone needs to really just take the time and do it. Um, so it definitely comes in spurts. I think what I've, um, I think I talked to this guy once and he was like, like for up until the computer, like our processing power, our ability to like um, do high computational processing problems was like slow because we had a period in my hand. But I think now that we have the computer, it's like our evolution of technology will exponentially change because you just have like computers that are able to run simulations for you in a various number of fields. I'm just talking about like, I was reading the other day that, you know, an AI was able to come up with um, like some sort of a solution, some sort of drug that is, could be used to treat like uh, diabetes, which is insane. Like a computer mm -hmm. came so it's not even in the lab. Um, it was called like Halicin. I think it got discontinued or, or it's still under FDA approval. I don't know what, what is exactly happening with that, but that just that example itself is crazy to me because if a computer is coming up with this stuff, you know, imagine what will happen in the next 50 years. And we, it's very hard for us to imagine the future um, because I'm sure people 50 years ago could never imagine something like this. Like, you not, like if I always ask my mom, you know, um, did you ever think, you know, you, you'd ever sit in a car, it would drive itself. Right. <laughs> That's crazy in itself. Um, so, and she was like, no, I, I'm not, let alone like we didn't even have cars back then. Right. I wouldn't think that 
a car could be able to drive itself. So the funny thing is, horses used to. So <laughs> we kind of took a step backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, it, it's it's definitely uh, it's definitely crazy. That's why I'm saying like we can't really understand the next 50 years. It's just going to be so different than what we imagined just because our scope, uh, at least my scope, like my understanding is very like limited, right? I mean, my life experience is only 25 years, whatever I've read, whatever I've seen, whatever. But I think in the whole world, right? It's like massive. There's like 7 billion people. These people, like some of these people will definitely come up with things that work hard. I think it'll, I think it'll happen. I just think it's hard for us to fathom and understand what's going on. Uh, so I feel like, uh, you know, the first time we went to the moon, we had about 3.5 billion people on the Earth. Now you said we had 7 billion. Mm -hmm. So that's 7 billion brains. Yep. But sometimes I don't feel like we're getting the full use of all those brains. Yep, yep, yep. It, it's like they're being preoccupied with, with non-human advancing yeah, I stuff. I agree. Uh, so, so how do we change that? I don't know. I don't think I have a, a good solution to that. I mean, I think the main thing is people really need to be passionate about what they're doing. Like They really need to... They need to find their niche in the world. Like they need to understand this is what I'm good at, this is what I can do. Um, and they need to do a lot of self introspection. I'm, a, I'm at least I'm talking about myself right now because I didn't, you know, know for a long time. I think doing a lot of self introspection, you know, meditation. I think these things really helped me. Um, I think if more people were to do that stuff, first of all, we'd have a lot more. Like we'd have a way more peaceful world. And I also think that um, that would really like empower people to go actually do what excites them. And when people do what excites them, that's when great work happens. And that's how you have advancements in so many different fields. Um, and it's partly kind of comes down, at least here in the US, our education system, um, it comes down to that too, because you know, you're sending your kids in their K through 12, uh, they spend a lot of time in school. So it's, it's kind of how you, know, you shape their minds, how they think about the future, all this stuff is really important. Um, I just think the U.S. system here, the education system, can definitely kind of be redefined. Uh, it was kind of shaped for uh, workers, you know, in the 19th century going into, sorry, 20th century going into like factories and stuff like that. Um, and it's evolved for sure. I just think that now that we're in an age of AI, we need to kind of, you know, utilize our personal creativity a lot more in a wide variety of problems. I'm not just talking about like math and science. I mean, creativity, right? Like art, dance. You can do so many things. It doesn't have to be that just kind of be a net positive for humanity. And I think the way that people do that is to introspect and really understand what you're good at. That's a difficult thing. I, yeah. I was listening to a motivational speaker and he was saying at one point in his life, um, you know, they paid him just enough so he wouldn't quit and he worked just enough so he wouldn't get fired. And that was like the, the level that he <laughs> rose to. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I mean, I think that I've heard that before too. But I, I don't know, I think pay is like definitely important, right? You have to get paid otherwise you can't survive. <laughs> you can't buy anything. Um, I just think that you need to do what you like to do. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, the money itself will come. Um, that's kind of how I've had the privilege of being able to do that. Um, you know, growing up here in spring with my parents and they were very like, I was very fortunate that they allowed me to like, uh, really do what I like to do and, and think about these things. And they, they open a lot of doors for me. Um, so if you definitely have that privilege, I would just encourage you to kind of, um, go out and you know really think about what you want to do maybe you know i mean uh, there may be an easier choice to make for some people than others mm -hmm. um but it's a choice for everybody yeah. you know i mean anybody could choose to pursue their dreams mm -hmm. um for some people the challenges may be bigger mm -hmm. or lower mm -hmm. but uh, for some people you put a little pebble in front of them and they, they're like i can't step over that <laughs> you know <laughs> other people you put a huge wall in front of them they're like i got it i got it yeah yeah, yeah. no i mean I think that happens to everyone. I yeah. think at some point, like, the pebble is always going to be there. Um, I think it's just the way you view, the way your mindset is, the way you view the world. Um, I think tennis, right? I play tennis. It's been very good for my self-development. Because um, I got prone to anger, or I was when I was a little kid. And um, so that's a, that's an obstacle, right? Because in tennis, you got to be, like, mentally focused. you got to mm -hmm. be calm, clear. Um, and I think it took me a while for you to understand that obstacle. Um, but now, trying to figure out how to solve that problem, solving that problem has opened so many other doors for me in my life, right? And so I think any obstacle or pebble that comes in front of me, I don't really, I, I mean, I, I see it as like a problem, but I see it as something that I can solve. It doesn't matter, you know, how small, how big, I think I can definitely try at least. And, I, and the other thing is, um, it's really cliche, but like not giving up is key. Because yeah. if you give up and then 
you give up, right? And then like three, four months later, you're like, oh, I wish I didn't give up. And then the thing is, you just wasted those three, four months of like, you could have just been trying in those three, four months and you don't know what would happen. So I don't know. I mean, I think it's, I don't know if these are weird things to say, but I just think this is how um, my experiences have shaped me. And it's also about like how I've read about certain people that I admire and I think that they do these things as well. So I wanted to adopt them and try to do it as best as I can. So, yeah. No, that totally makes sense. Um, and, you know, some people say, oh, I can't do this because it takes so long. Mm -hmm. but, but the thing to realize is the time's going to happen whether oh, yeah. you're doing it or not. Yeah, yeah. Might as well do something. Might as well like, do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I agree. <laughs> I think it's just, um, like I said, mindset. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's very hard to turn that. Um, but you got to try at least. I don't know. That's what I think. Uh, safe and affordable would you take a trip to space oh definitely i think it'll happen in our lifetime like i want to be able to take a trip in our lifetime um it would be very cool to be you know one of the humans in space because i think like again it's, it's more for me it's more of like a human race thing like we were kind of like like very loosely knit group of tribes now we've organized ourselves and like we're going to space which is crazy so i would i would definitely um I would love to like go to space at some point. I think it'd be very cool. Um, how far would you go? Just to orbit, to the moon and back, or would you immigrate to Mars? Um, if I mean, I think it just depends on the uh, opportunities available. But if, like you said, if all three of them, uh, I think it would also depend on my significant other. Uh, I was thinking about dating inside from Martian colonists. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know, maybe, to go and get that out of the way in the beginning. You know, maybe I'll need that if I. <laughs> If I uh, end up going to Mars, um, no, I think I think uh, if it's definitely possible to go in Mars, that, that would be cool. I don't know. I'm, see, I'm I'm this part. I like to just go see and experience new things, and I think it would be like very cool um, to just set foot on Mars. It's like mm. a completely different planet. It's not even the same. Like it's not something like. Uh, like humans kind of like evolved right they've evolved from all these different species like on planet earth over the course of millions of years you're setting foot on another planet that you have no like um i guess genetic connection or something life connection to which is crazy yeah um and i think that's just the first step too because in like ten thousand years um you know you don't know where we're gonna be and like we're talking about 200 years think about ten thousand years that's gonna be crazy um, but yeah, I, I would definitely do it. The Martians might look very different <laughs> than Earthlings. Oh yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, sun. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure about the atmospheric um, situations. Uh, do you think that they'll be able to like terraform form it eventually to like some conditions that we need here for humans? Well, if you ask people like uh, 200 years ago, uh, could we send messages through the air that people could hear perfectly without anybody between them hearing? They probably would say no. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, because you know before <laughs> no, radio they was invented. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I don't know how they would do it. I think they have ideas, but what I think is, uh, Henry Ford used to say, whether or not you think you can or you can't, you're right. <laughs> you know, so yeah, if you yeah. think you can, yeah, you yeah, can. can. If you yeah, think you can, yeah, you yeah, can. Yeah, I agree, I agree. <laughs> you know, so I don't see why not. Uh, you know, I mean, it might mm -hmm. take mm -hmm. hundreds of years or thousands of years. It might have a lot of false starts, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but... Yeah, someone will eventually, or some group will eventually be able to do it, I think, yeah. Maybe someday we'll have the entire moon encased in some type of air type air, air so thing. just walk around it. Just walk around it. Really cool. Yeah. No, I mean, I, the reason I'm asking the terraforming thing is, uh, have you seen Superman? Uh, I mean, like the original, like the long yeah, time ago. Yeah, no, now. I watched the one with uh, Henry Cavill. And you know how those people come to Earth and they're like, we're going to terraform the Earth to make a Krypton. Oh, I don't know about this. Yeah, no, so is this a new Superman? Like, when did no, it No, I mean, out? it's. I think it's pretty... Uh, it's not the one from like the 80s. Is no, it? no, it's like a newer one. It's probably like, Maybe I would say, 70s. I'm not sure what year it came out, but it has Henry Cavill in it. Um, it was pretty, I mean, I liked it. I liked the soundtrack and everything. But th that's why I'm asking. And I, I've read about it, I think on Wikipedia, there's a page for terraforming Mars. I think it's pretty cool. I just wanted to see. Because um, I think people have done, written about it in comic books and stuff. Um, it'd just be cool to see if that actually happens. I don't see why not. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, or maybe we alter ourselves so we could just live, live on, on there. Yeah, you know, yeah. So that's. I mean, they're doing CRISPR. You can edit your DNA. You don't know what they're going to be able to do now. Exactly. Yeah. That's crazy.
So I actually looked through your imaginary telescope at the future 200 years from now, mm -hmm. but I'd like for us to look at it from the other end. Mm -hmm. So imagine uh, you or your descendants make it to Mars, mm -hmm. and it's 200 years in the future, and your great, 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 uh, however many greats it takes to get 200 years, granddaughter is on Mars, mm -hmm. in high school, mm -hmm. in a history class, mm -hmm. doing a project in the 2020s. Mm -hmm. So she's like there looking back at now. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you hope she can write about in her paper? About, about now. I mean, I think what I, I'm, I love history. Um, so, <laughs> what could she write about now? It's <laughs> a very. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna think about this. I don't know. I mean, I think generally speaking up until this point like right now i think across the earth um we definitely have less human suffering um than at any other time you know at least in the last two thousand years right because there's a lot of wars strife famines you know forms of government that have changed technology is a lot better people can you know produce food i think that's one of the we, we definitely live in a very prosperous period of human history I mean, barring the war with Ukraine and Russia and all this stuff is going on. But I think, um, I think like we, we just kind of take that for granted, especially mm -hmm. with the advances in medicine and stuff. So I think for us people in 2022, that's one of the main things um, we had in society, I think. Um, I hope they can remember uh, about, you know, these self-driving cars and how cool, because maybe by, by then it was, it'll be like a normal thing. Like, yeah. oh yeah, whatever, just get in the car and just go. But Nobody knows how to drive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know, what else would they know about us? I think... I don't know, do you have another question that can like come back to that or something? Or is that that was pretty one? much my last one, you know, just kind of, <laughs> just kind of think, and you know, it's like, um, you know, another way of looking at the question is what do you hope happens in this decade? Like what were you, what would be your hopes and dreams that would have a significant impact that would be worth noting in 200 years? I mean, I, I personally think that we're headed yeah. into a different, um, a different decade with, like, there's a lot of geopolitical movements, like economies are changing, uh, the way the way people do work is changing, like it's a lot more, everything is getting like automated very easily, right? Because of the way, like, the rise of computers and stuff. So I think that's an important thing to address, um, figuring out how we can skill workers better. Um, I think this kind of, I, I think there, there will be, or there may be a conflict, like a world conflict in the next decade or two decades, um, just because, there's some kind of tension going on between U.S. and China. I don't really know. I mean, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of geopolitical stuff, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and I'm interested to learn more about it and just see what happens or see how it unfolds. Um, I just I just hope that, you know, people are able to just utilize all the skills and the resources that we have in front of us and people have discovered um, and just use it to the best of their ability. Because if everyone does that, you know, even even if like 55, 60% of the population does that, the world will be a completely different place, right? Even 10%, you know, maybe 10% of the population of the world is probably doing it. But I just think that, that that's my main thing, trying to get people to really understand how truly powerful they are and like mm -hmm. how much power they have to change the world. They just need to tap into it and unlock it. So yeah, I don't know. I hope that kind of answers the question. Yeah, I think that's good. Oh, well, I know I asked you a lot of questions and we talked about a lot of things. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about that we didn't touch on? Um, no. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for yeah. participating in my project. No problem. Thank you for having me.